Today, I'm gonna show you three easy steps to paint white. Who's on that next level, next level, next level? Who's on that next level, next level, next level? Who's on that next level, this one for the rebels? Yeah. Who's on that next level, ready to paint? They come around and the veterans stay. Keep talking in that devilish way. Rather spray your hair black like I'm Kelly Boucher. You wankster's done, no way the gang's the gun. So my man got the fun show to put on your gloves, yo. Whatever you do, just keep it clutch. Or else you get the ancient Chinese technique of the fuck. May I always keep it icy, keep my tip clean, go die, water beside me. I'm on the next level, think I want a trigger, ready to deliver the head of a Kenny as Wheeler. Who's on the next level, this one for the rebels? Who's on the next level, strictly for the devils? Next level, listen up or listen in, yeah. Next level, give a fuck or pack it in, aye. Who's on the next level, yeah, yeah. Who's on the next level, yeah, yeah. Yo dog Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. We're doing it again. Today, we're back to P3, Privateer Press War Machine, my main man Nemo. We took a week off so we can show you guys some secret wash technique, but now we're back and I'm gonna show you how to paint those shoulder harnesses or intake valves or sci-fi stuff. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I'm gonna show you three simple techniques. Three colors. We're gonna use an airbrush. We're gonna nurture up a really easy white with the airbrush. And we're gonna introduce a very subtle weathering effect. You'll see that there's gonna be an intake valve. There's like machinery. So I feel like this will be the part of the model. We do introduce this type of weathering, but later in the future, we will introduce all manner of scratching, scorching, chipping. All the paints we're gonna to use today are from the new Grimkin line from Privateer Press, the P3 formula. It's definitely a solid set of paints, guys. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on my Patreon page. Benny, Chris, Brian, That Irish SOB, Mr. TFG, Raphael, and Chuck. Thank you, guys. I cannot do it without you. Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page where you gain early and exclusive access to all of my content. Commander Nemo on deck, my main man from P3. I love this guy. This is where we left him off last time we worked on him. Very happy with him so far, but we got more to do, guys. Simple trick number one, sickly skin from the new Grimkin line from P3. This is an amazing color. We're gonna be introducing airbrush flow improver. This is a bonus tip, guys. If you watch the show, you already know we use this, but if you're new, you're welcome. Buy that shit right now. Use it to thin down your paints in the airbrush. It is a miracle. Now we're gonna do several thin coats. You guys know this routine. We're gonna build it up very softly, very subtly. Now in our airbrush, we have definitely more flow improver than water. That's a big thing that people have been asking me lately. So you see it's very subtle. It's sticking to that ghost gray primer and it's building up into this eggshell champagne off-white, kind of all at once. It's just an interesting off-white. I absolutely love this color. You can use it for this or you can even use it to highlight. And there you go. You see we've already built a new color into it. We're gonna use Marrow White. This isn't the simple trick. What the simple trick is, is this. It's not the gangster gumbo. It's not even the dollop of white we're introducing to the pot. It's the reason why we're doing this. At Next Level Painting, we always believe in introducing the new highlight color to the previous mid-tone or shade before you commit to that highlight. So this will help us despeckle any of our transitions because if you go straight to white, a lot of times you're gonna get that spider webbing and those speckles that you don't want. So I get a lot of questions about that. This is the trick right here, real thin, Plenty of flow improver, multiple thin coats. We're using a lot of air, almost 100% air in the airbrush and a tiny bit of trigger work to get the paint to flow. We're gonna create a very subtle transition. Kind of hard to even see, honestly, but it's there. This will eliminate all speckling when going to that bright color. White is a nightmare for a lot of people and I'm telling you guys, this is the answer right here. This is how you create those subtle, smooth transitions. And also, shockingly, P3 colors are very airbrushable with a little flow improver, it's amazing. There we go, it's looking its best. Now the trick here is we're gonna start introducing more and more marrow white to the mix until eventually we just rock pure marrow white, very thin down, several thin coats, let them dry, do another coat, see how it looks because it always looks more vibrant when it's wet than when it dries. It's just a fact of painting. 
Looking pretty good, I'm feeling it. That is some solid white right there that is silky smooth all day every day. Here is the final simple trick, Bogren Brown New Grimkin Colors. We're gonna use this to establish some weather tones. Now we're gonna use a very glazy technique here. This is almost water, in the like almost dirty paint water inside the pot of the airbrush. Very thin. What we're doing here is establishing a little bit of yellowing to that white. When it's not rust, it might be heat. We don't know, it could just be the fact that it's like a metal coupling attached to a painted metal surface and over time it's distorting the paint, I don't know. I just know it looks sick. So it's important to establish these types of staining before you go in there and paint the details and cut in those metal couplings and et cetera. You'll see why here in a later step. Feeling it real subtle. We're painting the intake valve or anything that we think might take this staining on. We're not a scientist here. We're mainly approaching it as a cool factor to get us another transition because I love to do tight ass transitions with my airbrush. I think it creates very interesting effects on miniatures. Looking good. Let it dry, build up a little bit more. See if it's too vibrant, not vibrant enough. Add more as desired to personal taste. I tend to stick a little bit more on the aggressive side, but I am being as subtle as I can with this white. All right, it's go time. What we're gonna do now is paint them nuts. Always wash the nuts before you highlight the nuts. We're taking that same mix right out of the pot. It's already been thinned down with water and flow improver, and we're gonna do a quick little pin wash where it's gonna settle in this little ring around those nuts and dry pretty opaque, but not super aggressive. This is how you get that next level, guys. We're also gonna focus anywhere else we think we need to to add that hyper contrast. And we're not gonna just stop there. At a later stage, we will come back in maybe with that pure marrow white and highlight the nuts, sl sling a little bit of white where we need to, maybe do some chipping, maybe do some scratches. I don't know yet. Gonna have to wait till we do it live on Twitch. Looking solid. We're gonna sneak a little bit more of this Bogren ground into any connection piece we think it needs to be in to shade it to enhance that contrast looking real fresh super happy with that silky smooth transition that's what i'm talking about guys legend now we are doing a pre-assembly as you've noticed the rest of the tips in this video are free bonus tips pig iron p3 it's an amazing silver we're gonna just slop it in there it might dry a little stainy, a little blotchy because we're doing one or two thin coats. Uh, mainly we're focusing on composition. I'm trying to get all the details at least cut in. So then I can reassemble these shoulder situations so I can really see where I'm going with the model. Solid gold, this is an amazing P3 color, but here's the linchpin, another bonus tip. Deathless metal, this is a new Grimkin color. Mix these together. You get an amazing bronzy, brassy color here, basically dark gold. That's what I call it. It's gonna be solid on the tops of these doodads, these couplings or whatever, electrical thingies. We're gonna just slop some of this on. It's gonna stick pretty decently, especially since we've introduced deathless metal. It's got real good stick. We're cutting in all the details now. For a later stage, you'll see why we're doing it in this order. We do the metals first, so we can be kind of sloppy because metals are kind of unwieldy compared to other colors. And then we're gonna slice in the new color in those coils. But here we go. Look at that. You can already see it's coming together, but it looks like it's missing something. Arcane blue. This is almost the color that got me into P3. I won't lie, it's one of the best colors of the game. We're gonna just now cut these glowy doodads in. If you remember the last video, we showed you how to do a cool little OSL using Arcane blue. And of course, we're gonna do some of that here. I'm liking it, seeing what I'm doing here. Locking in our composition. And we're just about ready to put these sh shoulder situations back on Nemo so we can see if we like what we've done. And if it's warranted a further approach, we're gonna do some chipping. I like what I'm seeing here. That means we can come in there, do some extra details on those metals, drop some wash game off, drop some scratches off. We already started a little bit here, but you know what? We're gonna probably finish this guy up live on Twitch, man. Thanks for watching. Anyway, guys, play on, players.